what's happening in Hexaco. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday. A lot of stuff to cover, as usual. A lot of, a lot of fun stuff. Um, took a break from cookies today. Working on some banana bread. Going well, going well. Really like it. I like the sticky, the chewiness, the dense texture, all that stuff. Really excited about that. Let me know in the ch in the chat your favorite baked goods. What do you like to What do you like to make at home, or go to your, your local uh, pastry shop and get a lot of great uh, a lot of great breads out there. Try to make them in almond flour half the time too, but it's just not the. Some things are, are better than others. Some things they just don't. You can't make them taste that good. Trying to trying to do the protein and less carbs type of thing, although. You know, almonds are pretty versatile and you can use them for just about anything, especially on a keto or otherwise. But anyways, uh, fuck my cookies on yeah, on to the next adventure, on to onto the next project. Now I'll probably bring back cookies again too. I do like those. Various, various flavors. Um some double chocolate's pretty good. Um, what else? What else do I like? Double chocolate, snickerdoodle, basically just cinnamon, maybe a few other things you want to throw in there. Yeah, anything, any kind of s'mores is good, I think, too. Not too sweet. Got to gotta cut down the, the sugar on it, though. Got to, and then pair it with some coffee. Mm. Speaking of coffee, here we go. I'll enjoy half of it today, probably. By the way, this is the, uh, I had this shirt in Vegas. Uh, had it made, actually. And I think that was the bubble, the banter uh, didn't pop. I think there was, or it was around the time. Around the time, or the one that I replied to him, and was like, "Hey, check out these green bubbles. The greenest of bubbles, type of thing." I don't know. We got to give him something good to talk about. The guy I'm telling you, I covered the other day. The guy already was covering Pulse Chain hard on launch. He did a whole segment on the show about it. You got to give him green candles. I don't blame him for not covering half the time. Like what? You can't just expect you know the big YouTubers to be these like you know fans of Richard and fans of pulse chain and stick through it no matter what, like we do. Like, yeah, I, I don't blame them for being like, uh, give me something to talk about. Kind of like Ivan too. Right. So hopefully we will. Hopefully we will make the whole system work. What's up, Red Squirrel? Number one, as usual. Box monitors here. How's it going? Happy. So I hope everyone's having a good Sunday. It's sunny outside, so I'm not going to be here too long. Probably go for another, probably go for about 40 minutes or so. And I'm going to enjoy myself some sunshine as well. Mark's ready. Good, good. Good to hear you. What's up, Davis? I heard that we aren't broadcasting wells in OA when they buy because it makes the cheese pay attention. I have an opinion on this, honestly. I'll uh I'll get into it in a bit, but I'm I know like it's it's interesting how how there's people who have comments about don't tell anyone or or don't talk about it, or like that somehow that somehow is threatening their bags, or I think it's a lot emotional more than rational, honestly. Anyways, I'll talk about it. I got some stuff. But first, before we get into that, before we get into the Ethereum whale buys, before we get into a million dollars being bridged over, pretty exciting, right? Richard tweeted again today, and I think it's interesting. He tweeted a little bit in the last couple of days. I'm like, you know, there, there's some more interesting than others. However, I say that half the time, and I come back and look, I'm like, man, actually, that was I should have paid more attention to that other one. That was a, that was a signal for something. But check this one out, which led to a whole whole discussion with uh one of her one of her besties sorry calling besties from the all-in podcast one of her uh, besties in the community uh nuclear herbs covered this uh pretty well uh i'll bring up in a minute too but uh he's talking about theorem this is the first time i've heard him directly mention the sec case so he lists it right here by april 8th the motion to dismiss will be public and if you search for this if you just uh, Google for this case, Securities Exchange Commission versus Schuler, right there. So this is the first time I've ever seen him directly mention the case at all, which is which is pretty. Again, dude has unlimited confidence, and I think that's contagious, and I think it should be. Um, pretty great misspelled cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, right there. So that was the most interesting thing here, and again. You know, he's talking about the different cases and amicus briefs and bad presidents and stuff like that, and how people should be rooting for Pulse Chain. They should be rooting for the Richard Hart case to be resolved. Nothing was, there was nothing wrong. Richard didn't do anything wrong in the first place. And, you know, all of this stuff could affect Ethereum if it goes poorly. So, uh, again, in this way, 
you gotta you gotta root for people who are going against the uh, the uh, over. What's the word? Uh, you know, uh, regulation by enforcement uh, agencies such as you know what we've seen the SEC do. Look at all these cases; it's crazy. It's not it's not to say that there isn't bad actors to go after. Are you going back to Coinbase, man? Come on, Coinbase. Brian Armstrong, like, has is has some of the highest character I've ever seen. I'm sure a lot of people said that about Sam Bankman Free before uh, before all that stuff happened too. But Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, they seem like they got it together. And uh, I don't know a lot of this stuff. I don't, I don't like it, especially ours. <clears throat> so that, and then it kicked off. Let's see. Yeah, nuclear herbs for the win as usual. Listed all the dockets here. Feel free to take a look there. And then also he published them. I was talking to him earlier. And he did a rundown, which I think is amazing. I, I need to go through it thoroughly myself. I'll just briefly talk about it here. But uh, so dates to be aware of. In April 5th, both parties need to file a proposed discovery plan. Uh, that's not going to be that interesting. And then April 8th, this is what uh, I was talking to nuclear herbs in Vegas. And uh, we were, you know, he was mentioning this and that's why, you know, he's agreed to come on the show as well to discuss around that time. Uh, April 8th, as Richard mentioned, Richard's motion to dismiss will be filed. And then uh, he says he's going to cover that, download it, and post it. And April 11th, there's initial scheduling conference before Judge uh, Kuo, 1030 Eastern. Most will be boring as toast, but we may learn something about what the parties have been doing behind the scenes. Maybe someone will call in and stream this live on their show. Hmm. I saw, it's really cool. I saw uh, meet Kevin do that for the Coinbase thing. And that was really cool to, to get the live commentary and stuff from it and actually hear what's going on. Uh, but again, yeah, check with your your people who give it legal advice and all, the, all that stuff from it um, before uh, that happened. And April 15th, in that tax day too. Uh, you'll likely start seeing motions to leave for filed amicus briefs. Uh, and then so look for documents motion to leave filed amicus briefs for life. So something around amicus briefs. Again, I, I'm not a, not a legal expert in any way here. I'll definitely be asking about this stuff. I'll put this in the notes and stuff to talk about them around that time. Like what's next? And I'm sure we'll talk about that. And then July 8th, looking even more forward. SAC's response brief is due to Rich's motion to dismiss. Uh, nuclear herbs will do some analysis on that for us. Uh, and then I'll mock them as appropriate. This guy's awesome. So I assume there'll be something appropriate. Uh, witty, witty and clever. Very, very funny. Glad he's on our team. August 22nd, Richard will file a reply brief, which is used to address arguments made and the response discussed immediately. With this file, the motion is considered to be fully briefed and ready for either ruling or oral argument. Here, the court has granted oral argument. So, wow, leading up, this is like a movie. We're getting to, we got the, leading up to the climax here in October. So April could be interesting, could be good. Things could happen before then. Uh, but if nothing else, October, October 24th, oral argument will be held on Richard's motion to dismiss before Judge Amon. This is a can't miss event. Hopefully, again, the streamers community put this on the channels. We'll, we'll certainly see. I'm excited to see who's who's up for that or or if we can figure out some, some way to do it here as well. And I would not expect a ruling at the close of the oral argument. Judge Mom will certainly take the matter under advisement and written ruling somewhere in my best guess around 36 day mark. Wow. Will it be a Merry Christmas 2024? We shall see. Maybe, again, maybe the prices go up, everything's green, and we don't even care about this. Maybe we're like, ah, yeah. You know what? I'm up 100x, whatever from this point, whatever. Of course, we want, you know, Richard to still kill it, but and uh, SEC to, to lose another case that's worth losing and um, further glory, all that stuff too. But wouldn't it be cool if those green candles this year uh, for the ecosystem where everyone's like, ah, this is everything's going fine. And then who knows, would this be, this be a catalyst to further propel the ecosystem? Get rid of any such doubt whatsoever. The early believers, you know, 
would you know what the early believers are rewarded and then everyone ever gets to come in mid cycle and and buy two and hopefully make some gains too that'd be fun that'd be fun hope my voice is going to hold up today we're going to try to because we got a lot more stuff to go through probably should put a coffee drop or something in just from talking so much and busy day today did some uh did my runs did pull-ups and stuff as well did some extra exercise eating pretty good earning my banana bread gotta earn it gotta earn gotta earn those carbs right so story though let's start off with this one we're, we're gonna build up to it it's gonna be interesting don't worry so the first one again shout out to storyteller keeps us informed quite a bit with stuff going on so that wallet is buying pls now now before we get super excited this is not from what i can tell this is not the sack daddy wallet this is in response to pulse alerts alerting us about around 310 uh wrapped eth around one million dollars usd bridged being bridged to pulse chain and and also commentary you know the commentary there, there as well and this wallet you know, if you click on it, you can see, I mean, if you look at the picture screenshot, you can see um, buying pulse. So a million dollars coming over the bridge, buying pulse. And uh, also farming too. So if you put this address, let's see, I was checking this out earlier. If you use the fatty wallet, by the way, it's, it's excellent. Highly recommend it. Part of the pH products from the um, pH UX uh, Fame and Fiat. Buck and Buck and all them also made fatty. Pretty cool wallet. And you can see they hold uh, yeah, almost a billion pulse, around 200 and some million uh pulse decks. And they are farming. So what are they farming? They're farming, they're in the ETH PLS and they're in the ink PLS farms. Are in that sweet, sweet ink over here. So those are interesting because I, I've talked about before too. You can go realdefi.com and click exchange, use the official apps, uh, the gateways for the official apps, uh, or learn to earn all this cool stuff. Go to the farms I was talking about. Those are two of, to me, the most, more of the most interesting farms and they make the most sense to, uh, yeah, see, even the APRs went down. I wonder if that's because the, the money went in too. Because how much do they have? How much do they have in it? Yeah, well, they have a million dollars worth of just wrapped ETH and PLS. So a million dollars worth of wrapped ETH and PLS and about 452K worth of PLS in the ink farm. So I wonder if these went down. These stayed about the same. They're in the 50% range, but I thought the wrapped ETH was close to 100%. It was in the 90 range or so. It, it may have went down because they added liquidity there um, or you know other factors to ink. Ink price goes up and down. But that is one of the, to me, most interesting farms. Uh, again, if you don't want to do stables and you don't want to settle for the low APR with you know, low 20%, you know, that's low com compared to the other farms, at least. APR with the Pulse and Pulse X. Again, do your research. Watch all the yield farming videos I have on the playlist. Go Real DeFi, learn to earn, click farming. It's got a ton of videos there. Uh, figure this stuff out before you decide to participate. But I think that's uh, the wrapped ETH Pulse. And the ink farms where you can compound earn ink you know i you know you could you could see people putting ink back in putting more pulse back in keep compounding over time too pretty cool so they're participating in those two farms which are pretty popular it seems so million dollars bridged in uh buying pulse has the pulse buys and then farming getting that sweet sweet ink yeah quite a quite a nice portfolio there Shout out to them. Hopefully they have some great gains in the ecosystem with that. So that is the million dollars bridged in. And what's up, J Money? Yeah, I remember you, J Money. The Lambo track suit. That was awesome, man. That was, a, that was this, this gentleman had a Lambo track suit at the uh, Vegas meetup. Very, very cool. Good to see you, man. Glad to see you. I know, I know, I'm pretty sure I've seen you before uh, around here too, but glad to meet you and hang out and uh, love that track suit. That was awesome. So million dollars here so that's one thing that happened um earlier today pretty cool or like last night i guess you would say depending on you know, where you are what time zone, all that stuff 
And then you, you, you guessed it. We got some more stuff going on. Um, I'll give you a little bit of preamble the first. So if you're not familiar, our favorite whale, besides God whale, it was formerly the world's largest tie holder that uh, recently went and bought 170K ETH with such dye. I'll give you this for a breakdown. Uh, again, this is all public information. You know, some people track it, some people analyze it, they use tools, otherwise get alerts. Uh, but again, all this is just on the blockchain. Anyone can look at it, anyone interested. So almost all the SAC funds have been swapped for 170K ETH, just to give you a rundown. Um, also 10.3 million in stables and 16.2K. Uh, a lot of people probably either, you know, not paying attention to this one. 16.2K ETH sent through uh, Tornado Cash. So that uh, is, you know, virtually untraceable type of thing, right? What is that going to be used for? I don't know. Let's see how much it is. Let's do 3,000 or let's see, 3,500 times 16,2, oops, 16,000. That's how much it was, 16,2. So that is $5 million. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, that's $56 million. So around 50, yeah, 50 to $60 million that uh, was anonymized. And again, all the stuff's on chain. Interesting to see. Got to think that's, uh, got to think that's cool. Got to think that's bullish too. That uh, money, again, all, all these, all these moves and stuff are being made in the public for a reason. Telegraphing, uh, you know, we, we suspect. And some of them uh, need not be. And they can choose a million different ways to anonymize transactions, not have them there too. Um, so again, I, I see, I mentioned earlier, I see people asking if these moves should be reported on, would it jeopardize the whales moves or plans or, or something. And I would simply ask like, why, why would it? Like if you're a whale making deliberate moves, you know, everyone can see on chain. You're not worried about turtles and dolphins finding out and, and, and doing what front, front running, like they're going to front run, you know, they're going to front run mega whales and stuff. Like if you're a whale, you don't care about, I guess, fees. You're, you're, you're like, you don't care about like all these little things that like, you know, a lot of us care about or, or at least pay more attention to. You're focused on completely, you're not focused on getting like the cheapest prices, all this stuff. You just want to get stuff done. Like whatever your plan is, you want to get it done and done at the time horizon or uh, timeline that you've set it on. So if you really think about it, not, not just play these like what if games and fear the bags won't pump because of some reason, don't touch it. Like, I just don't see the rationale there. I, I it's really, I don't see it in a lot of ways either. I don't see the lack. I don't. I don't think not sharing information for the most part. Of course, some things have more correlation than others, but in general, for blockchain moves, I don't see a lot of reasons not to share transparent blockchain moves based on public data with people. Like, in fact, you could even make a case that transparency makes it even more fair for the squids and the dolphins and the sharks because the sharks and whales they already know all this stuff. So the whole. Like we shouldn't talk about X or Y or Z because it could make it easier for, you know, even people who are not good actors or whatever, uh, or do the work for them or SEC, all that stuff. I just, I just generally, I just don't buy it. I, I think first of all, there's nothing wrong with people moving money around, using it to buy whatever they want, whenever they want. And if you think our, our age or these uh, mega wells or otherwise is doing anything wrong, then you also like, you also must believe, or you must have to factor in, they probably ran it by this 11 person deep Chad legal team beforehand, which we'd assume you'd have got a thumbs up to freely transact as a normal person could and would. So again, hiding pu public information is like, it just feels like more emotional and more of like red candle type thing. And like my bags are down type of thing, uh, than like rational and helpful to the community who wants to know what's up and make better decisions from the openness and transparency that we can give them. So, Anyways, that's that's my rationale for, I think, a lot of people. And again, I don't even track all this stuff all the time. I, of course, you know, I'm talking about it here. I'm collecting information and trying to provide good information about it. But the people who are tracking this, I appreciate them. And I hope they continue um, giving us information because that's, that's what, like, would you rather not know? I would rather know. Uh, I, like, I think it's, first of all, exciting and bullish half the time. And yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't think anyone's made a case where it actually you know, again, nobody wants harm to come to the ecosystem and stuff. But again, you're making all these, you'd be making all these assumptions that that would actually happen and that smart 
founder, genius billionaire guy, hasn't already figured all this stuff out. And when they, when anyone wants to hide stuff, tornado cash, they go through exchanges. They like, there's a bunch of different ways to pseudo anonymize or anonymize stuff. So anyways, that's what I, I tend to go with for the most part. So anyways, um, Ethwell, Mega Ethwell, 170K. There's a quick review. My thoughts on that. But today, today, now for the main event, for the main event, are you ready? Is your body ready for another storyteller tweet? Storyteller, we got Money Gang, we got a lot of people covering good stuff. We got Somi, you know, covers this uh, time to time as well. In the past hour, sacrifice related wallets bought 250K worth of PLS. Yeah, I know that's not 2.5 million K or anything, but. Um, Still pretty cool to see some buys here. Got some green candles. Uh, the wallet also received an additional 635K from related LP addresses. So if you click the link here, the bank is awesome. Look at the transactions. And you can see, scroll down, get through a lot of the spam stuff or just not important. Yeah, 18 hours ago at this point, look at that 10K die, boom. PLS, 5K USDT, boom, PLS, 5K USDC, boom, PLS, 10K die, PLS, 5K USDT, 5K USDC, 10K die, 50K, yeah, like 50K, 50K USDC, 10K, 5K, 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 all in the last 24 hours. Pretty cool. Pretty exciting. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool to see. Like, like, I don't care who was doing this, who was making these buys. Like it could be anyone like seeing just straight up clips come out five, 10, 50 K clips over and over and over. That seems pretty cool. Seems pretty cool. Like it's pretty, pretty cool to see people buying your coin, no matter who they are, what they're buying it for. But a lot of cases, as we can see, historically speaking, these wells that we see have been pretty benevolent. Why are these pictures? So why? That that looks like an actual real one. I think that is the only actual real one where we got a we got a terrible gut shot. But he doesn't look that way. He doesn't look like that. It's funny though. Richard actually was in pretty good shape uh, from time to time. Uh, I did the I saw the um, I was on stream with somebody and I was playing the video of him doing squats, and he was not fat, uh, and he was like super strong. So I'm sure he is still super strong. But I mean the guys. You know, he's in the upper 40s now, I think. He's, what is he, 40, 46, 45, 46, 47, somewhere through there. So, you know, longevity research, we got to get stronger. We got to figure this out. Anyways, look at the portfolio. We can see we got 200 billion, 200 billion, one, two, three, one, two, three, million, thousand, million, billion, 205 billion PLS X. Again, some people believe all the buys of all these coins won't be sold. Wouldn't that be bullish, right? Who knows? We, we're, we're left to speculate and guess. We have no expectations, but it sure is fun to imagine, right? Just like all the other 08 coins, all the other benevolence has happened. Pretty sweet. So a ton of PLSX, uh, got about a cool 5 billion. Pulse, 70 million, or sorry, 70,000 ink. So it's funny though, 70,000 ink is worth almost as much as the 5 billion PLS. That's, you know, because it's ink numbers. It's, uh, the units are quite different. Supplies and all that stuff too. And so that's 344,000 uh, USDC. So 116 USDC, maybe a few others in the die 600, yeah, 600,000. So yeah, just over a million or so. Got about a million, million two, something like that. And stable coins left that could just be, you never know, could produce a bunch more clips. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. I like that. And yeah, just a cool uh, 569 Ethereum right there. Nice. Chat. Somebody stay super strong. Hello to based deadlift uh, and join ears only. Nice. I like that word. And join ears. People who enjoy life. Eng engineers. Engineers who, a lot of different ways to do that. What's up, Chad? Good to see you, man. So, <clears throat> pretty interesting. A lot of a lot of moves there. Um, or I got a lot more moves. This is the fourth time. Again, not a lot of cash. 
you know, in the clips, but quite a lot of clips coming through over time. So again, I've, I've covered this before in previous streams about, oh, what's testing the market? What's going to happen in April? Got all the events coming up. You can check out the videos and stuff on that. Did one just yesterday. I already talked to quite a bit about it too. But this is, yeah, I think the fourth time. So PLS only this time. A week or two ago, it was uh, Hex on Pulse Chain, of course. And then the two times before that, I believe it was equal amounts of all four of the Pulse Chain coins. Uh, Pulse, Pulse X, Hex, and Ink. So when will the fifth time be? How much will it be for? I do not know. But I think it's uh, pretty exciting when it does happen. And you may ask, why, why PLS only? Why only PLS? Storyteller had a remark here. What does it mean? Protecting price levels. Pretty interesting. What do you guys think? Why, why just PLS? Was it just trying to... Let's see. It's got to go pulse. Were they just trying to um, you know, keep it below, <laughs> above... Again, I don't do TA. Just keep it above a certain range or so. Keep it within here. Give it a little bit of support. You know, what were these very measured calculated clips? What were they meant to do? What was 250K injected? What was that meant to do? What do you guys think? So again, Storyteller has uh, protected price levels. Algorithm, absolute OA must prop up. It's supposed to like there's news in April, 40%. Pump seems certain. A lot of stuff happened in April. I think it'll be exciting. It could be nothing. It could literally be like uh, just another month. But boy, there's a lot of, a lot of things that uh, if you want to put a narrative together, I think there's a few pieces there. Who knows, though? Who knows? I can only hope. I only hope that's the right move for it to happen. Anyways, if it doesn't need to happen in April, whatever. But that would be that would be cool if we had a little bit of glory in April, just a just a just a little bit, where everyone's like super, everything's bottomed out. Everyone's like, all right, we're back, we're back again. We, we were back, we were we were there. We got the foot in the door. Some you know the door was kind of it was twenty percent open, and now we made a little bit of money. We're feeling good again. Most people aren't sad. They're excited for the future again. <laughs> Instead of just barely hanging on, just based on their their faith and you know uh, metrics alone, that sort of thing. What's up, Stephen? Talk to the chat for a minute. Can't get get to get to all the questions, but I will try to get to a few. What's up, Luna C Point? Welcome, welcome. Your avatar does certainly bright things up. Appreciate that. Good to see you. Do like that. Sup, Lazar. Welcome, welcome. Let's ask the tornado cash is okay to use again. There's just not bad for me. I don't know. I don't know. Let's look it up. Tornado. Do they have like a ruling or a reversal on that? Tornado cash. Okay to use. Currently legal in the U.S. The reason for having this is for blockchain. I don't know. It's all this stuff's kind of weird. See, that's why. I mean, these kind of answers are not very nuanced. See this person, yeah. Yes, you can. Even US citizens can. The problem is the outlook for any crypto comes out of any cash. So, I think that's the thing that makes the most sense. Unfortunately, is I guess the the way I think about it is the 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 risk you could take is using whatever. I don't know how you sanction a protocol, honestly, but like in general, using services like that. If in the future they are deemed 
distasteful and your rights are violated and all this stuff happens, then it could be harder to get money back and forth. Or you may have to jump through bigger hoops or something. Yeah. I haven't heard of anyone getting other than the developers, which is another weird thing and seems un un American, unconstitutional as well. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I think that's the biggest fear. I don't know exactly, but I would say the biggest fear. I'm not gonna call it illegal, legal, anything like that. All I know is they um yeah. Some weird unfreedom stuff has been happening with it, which we don't know if they'll get reversed in the future or not, or to what extent it actually affects people. But I think the biggest fear is wallet address are being, yeah, looked at, I guess. It sucks. I don't, I don't like talking about it, but <clears throat> in general, just do some research on it. I don't, uh, it sucks. I don't like, I don't like anti-freedom stuff. I don't like that. I don't like in the name of using all this stuff in the name of stopping, you know, you can't violate everyone else's rights just to stop, you know, criminals from using it for other stuff that you already have laws for, for example. So I don't, I don't like that at all. But I don't know much about it. And uh, hopefully we'll have some better solutions in the future that are like literally cannot uh, cannot mess with the people who are doing legit transactions, whatever they want to do. A bridge wealth. Uh, the most asked about meme coins. I don't, again, I, I don't spend all the time thinking about meme coins or NFTs, for example, either. I have my own views. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't spend a lot of time on them. And I just, I, I have a very selective amount of um, projects that I look at. So, again, everyone uses their own discretion. I use mine as well. I'm, I have no particular opinion that I like to promote or otherwise. I just like to show data on which ones I think are better. For long-term investments and stuff, but I wish everyone the maddest of gains. Richard mentioned meme coins in a tweet earlier. He's like, "Good to see all the community and all this stuff." And he like mentioned, you know, platforms and borrowing and lending. And he mentioned meme coins. He mentioned like, a whole bunch of stuff. So hard to say. It's not like again, it's not. You don't have to. Nobody has to like promote them and support them in order just to be like neutral or like. Ambivalent, is that the right word? Ambivalent. Maybe that's just describing mean coins in general. People's ambivalence. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I like hex. I like products like that. I like platforms that have positive feedback loops. So again, I hope everyone makes a ton of money, money doing whatever they're doing, buying whatever coin they want. And I'll just keep Talking about the ones that I really like, and I think are are good for uh, good for the values that that I uphold, and yeah, some of the memes are they're funny, of course. You know, again, hope they make a lot of people money, but I, I'm not. They're not. They're on my top list of things to to cover or uh, or otherwise. The base base of no OA intervention or raging market means price will slowly dwindle lower and lower. I think onboarding is the counter to that. So that's the ideal that, again, I've covered this, you know, the different theory of why these mega wells are doing certain buys and bridges and stuff like that. I think they are testing the market. They're seeing how it responds. Uh, talked about it with, you know, the Axis stream, if you caught that a week or two ago, uh, he calls it a bootstrap. I think that's an interesting way to look at it. Where chicken egg problem, we need green candles on board, but we can't uh, get green candles unless we onboard more people. So, one way of looking at uh, OA, Mega Wells, you know, whatever these entities who are buying and bridging and doing stuff, one way to look at it is um, let me just go back to the screen. Go back to yes, yeah, tweet. Is are they doing it to? bootstrap and be like, okay, here's some green candles. Now we actually have a chance of onboarding a lot more people because they don't see this like thing that launched in a bear market and went down. Even though they see an amazing community, they see people talking about it, they see people streaming all the time. They don't see the green candles. They don't see the potential in the chart until it happens. And back in January, I mean, if you just look at the chart, 
everything changed. January 6th, right? January 6th. And then from there, it started painting a chart that <clears throat> I imagine a lot of people see more favorable than the one that was before it, which was this. All they saw up until that point was this. Oh, this thing that went up and down. And yeah, maybe, yeah, it got some December, a little bit of run up, back down. Oh, Christmas, nice. And then back down. But now they see this. Maybe they like that better. So I think it, I think of it more first. I think of it more of it as a bootstrap than a needing them to be around forever. Um, yeah, I mean, I said before, ninety percent core, ten percent lottery. I'm going to at least spend 90% of my time talking about the core coins. I, I, I guess I would try to do that. At least I say that I, I think that's a good, that's a good aspiration at least. Um, but 10% of time, I mean, there's a lot of great projects in the ecosystem that are, you know, I've, I've talked about on the show before Tetra, you know, liquid loans and power city. And, um, you got, you know, Mentra with the NFT platform, like people, are building a lot of really cool stuff out there that have a lot of tokens. And I don't talk about them all. Um, and I probably won't, but I'll talk about a few of them. And we have plenty of other people who cover everything. We'll talk about everything. Um, but yeah, I think spending 90 to 95% of my time talking about the core coins, I think I'm helping onboard the most people doing that. So that's just why I, I naturally am very selective with the other ones. That's just the way I look at it. Again, everyone. Do whatever you want. But that's uh, that's the way I found that I can operate the most efficiently and help this ecosystem the best is sticking with the core coins for the most part. And then talking about the talking about a few other ones that I like. Um, yeah, I have, I have founders on the show every once in a while. Hedron, of course, Maximus, all this stuff too. But pretty, just just a few. Yes, but then the pups are not granted. So I'm those users trying to expand. I don't. Again, it's it's. It, a lot of this stuff is just kind of like, well, I guess we'll see. I mean, again, you got you got really rich people who seem to be very smart, making deliberate moves. So if they didn't think it was going to work, or at least have a good shot at working, maybe. I mean, I I would just think maybe they wouldn't have chose that as the plan. A lot of things that you know, a lot of information that we don't know. We're not privy to so there could be some things that if we need oh my gosh we, we know that thing and now it all makes a lot more sense maybe that will just come 2020 hindsight so hard to say i don't think we have all the data yet what's up user one two three four one two three four five rh max is a appreciate that man appreciate that all right any other questions for a wrap up again can't get to everything in the chat just scrolled through for a minute so Finn Bear, Alex, Armando. Good to see you guys. New World Disorder. What's up? Just scrolling. It'll add spit and liquidity. We'll be looking down to people to buy a project doesn't make it right. Won't be looking down to telling people to buy when the project doesn't make it possible to work. I'm not sure I understand that one completely. Yeah, that's what you include. Oh, did they add? Did were there more liquidity added to the it's about the loan token, maybe? Try by AK loan see your slippage. Oh, okay. Yeah, what is how is the loan token doing real quick? We'll just look at that real quick. Yeah, I hope they're hope the ecosystem stabilizes on all these different platforms that are trying to do really cool stuff, trying to lock up a ton of TVO. So much liquidity. 153k liquidity. And that is on on PulseX. So yeah. Hard to say. Not a lot, not a huge amount, but uh we'll see. What's the 15 minute look like? Well. Well, 
we'll see. Hopefully, I wish all these platforms the best. The Empower City, everything else. Again, they're providing super good solutions, um, hard solutions, things that are hard to do. And you know, they're trying to they're trying to buy these services for the community, where a lot of people can take advantage of different DeFi tools to to do the things they need to do. So hopefully, uh, all these charts look a uh, look a lot better at some point. And a lot of them, again, tied to PLS. You know, PLS goes up a lot. Maybe the rising tide uh, brings up all the all the ships too. Grumpy old guy, Pulse and Pulse X will melt faces in the bull run. Looking forward to that. If and when we are so lucky for it to happen, that'll be a sunny, sunny day. That Pulse play, if the sack funds are used to put in, won't the wells have enough to exit? Then God want other to send this send it to Mars. Tech funds are used to put in. Won't the wells have enough to exit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the point is again, if you don't want to rely on the benevolent wells, you know, basically being exit liquidity for the other wells who are not so interested in the ecosystem, then again, you do this. For example, you could do this bootstrap. This is like the core idea, I think, is do the bootstrap, get the onboarding, get everyone else in, have this ton of you know transactions and community and sentiment and people believing and all this stuff. And then when the wells do want to exit, hopefully they can just do liquidity. They don't have to market sell and dump all the time. But they do, if we have, you know, again, everyone else supporting it, not just a few wells, a few benevolent wells, you know, everything can be soaked up a lot easier. People can exit they want to, they can leave, price can keep going up. I think that's like kind of the the ideal behind it all. Um, the theory uh, that you could say. Will it work? Will it work? I don't know. We'll see. Again, I think it's some very smart people are, are trying to do some very good things for the ecosystem. So who have a lot more information than we do generally. So I don't doubt that uh, it's got a good chance. So certainly hope so. And then God one other funds can send to Mars. I hope so. I'm looking forward to seeing some God, some more God candles. Shout out to God. Well, really cool. God candles locks this locks a lot of his hex up for 14, 15 years. Pretty sweet. Is there any way to check how many new users come in pulse pulse autocorrect pulse strain, uh, or new actor wallet? So we to check how many new users. So you got app hex dot win. And that's where I, I was doing the projections in April. We, if things keep momentum up, we should hit a million active wallets here. So I'll put this in the chat. What's up, Ted Nelson? So right now we're at 914. Again, a few days ago, I did the, per, the projections and they were around, we just hit over 900 or so. So 914, getting around, yeah, 1,500, 2,000 per day new. If we keep that up, yeah. Maybe uh, middle end of April, we hit one million. That'd be a pretty cool, pretty cool milestone for you know if you like numbers like that. So that's that's just one way. Uh, as far as you know, I, again, I don't know. I would like to be explained how exactly this is calculated. Is it just wallets that have made their first transaction uh, and they're they're added to the new active wallets? That active wallet that seems to make sense to me. Hmm. Chill. What do you think about the ridiculous ETH ETF uh, that came out last week? I guess I know. It's I think the way Richard put it was the best. It was like, you know, trying to ban Bitcoin stuff, price went up. You know, government did all this stuff, price went up. All the billionaires fudded it, price went up, like all that stuff too. So again, maybe we look back and it's like, man, that FUD uh, just gave everyone a breather to uh to buy more before it went up. Maybe we'll look back and say that. Uh, a lot of the FUD uh, doesn't seem to didn't seem to have a big impact on Bitcoin, at least for uh, in the short term or long term in some cases. So we'll see. Hit the likes, people. Grumpy old guy. Appreciate that, man. Ted Nelson, good to see you, man. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. You guys like the new background? I got a few. Got a few more backgrounds. A few more. Uh, a few more ones to try out. I like this one. I like this one. Anyways, hopefully you get some more green bubbles. Get some more green bubbles like this. Hope to see some more, and um, yeah, hope to hope to keep bringing some great information to you all. Again, what I think is interesting, what I think is useful, 
from the ecosystem. And again, hopefully get some more green candles coming up. That's all I got for you today. Sci-Vibe and 5555. Five, five, five.